Hey, everybody. Welcome to What Did I Get in the Mail? I still haven't quite figured out what I'm calling this segment. But, hey, guys. I got great news for you. I got a letter. A personal letter from, from President Donald J. Trump on Wednesday morning. Now, it doesn't actually say what the date is, because I don't know what Wednesday morning they would be referring to, but I, I can tell you that it was apparently sometime in 2022, because that's when I received this. I'd like to read it to all of you, because I think it's very important that we all hear the immortal words of this form letter that I was given by Donald Trump. And I read, Dear Fellow Patriot, I would like you to join me in supporting the Republican National Committee's efforts to win back the U.S. House and U.S. Senate in the critical 2022 midterm elections. Yeah, I'm sure that's going real well right about now. I'm working with the RNC because I know firsthand that the RNC provides more training, research, voter registration, identification, and direct financial assistance than any other GOP committee. Resources vital, this is underlined, by the way, resources vital to electing Trump Republican majorities to the U.S. Congress. It's all about America first. Okay, I'm going to stop for a second. America first is another one of those doesn't mean anything slogans, like make America great again, or the great American, whatever it was, restitution, whatever they were calling it. What does America first mean? Put America first? The country's never done that before. I'm also wondering if they are aware that uh, America first was a slogan that the pro-Nazi division of the United States used in the days after World War II. It's the reason why if you look at the old Dr. Seuss cartoons, you'll see America first pop up because Theodore Geisel was writing for magazines, you know, in the wake of World War II, and so there was, a, there was a lot of people in this country that had pro-Nazi idealism that did it under the banner of America First. I don't know if that's a dog whistle that they planned on putting out there, but here's where we get to the meat and potatoes, so thank you for holding on for a second. Most importantly, let me put this up. I'll put this up and I'll read it from my teleprompter here. Most importantly, the RNC is leading the fight to stop voter fraud, all caps, in its tracks by defeating the Democrats' federal takeover of elections, hiring an army of election integrity watchdogs across the country, and backing Republican state election reforms that make it easier to vote and harder to cheat. Free and fair elections are the bedrock of our constitutional republic. Well, you got one. You got a free and fair election. The audits themselves pretty much showed that. I don't know what more you want. They're talking about this problem that doesn't exist. And I think it's very interesting that they want to punish everybody in the country for the actions of a select few. Okay, if we want to make that narrative, maybe we could do it with guns. No, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Stop voter fraud. What voter fraud? I'm sorry, folks. There was no voter fraud in 2020. I, I know that there's a lot of people that are going, oh, it was there. But then every time you have somebody come around and say that, oh, we got the receipts, you never see the receipts. <laughs> every time they say, oh, we can prove it, they can't. Who's the lieutenant governor down in Texas? Yeah, and he was saying, like, I'm offering a reward for anybody who can show me that there was voter fraud in the 2020 election. And so somebody eventually did come forward. One person came forward to show that there was voter fraud, that they had a case of voter fraud in the 2020 election. And it was for a, it, it was a Republican that tried to vote twice for Donald Trump. I mean, he paid out, apparently. Man of his word, I guess. But. Don't you think everybody would have been jumping at the chance if they could have proved anything about voter fraud? That they would have been going going right down and telling Dan what's-his-face that, yeah, give me some money for this, please. There's a whole video I could do about why a lot of the voter fraud conspiracies are complete rubbish, but one thing at a time. I hope you will join me and do your part to support the RNC in the upcoming elections by sending... Here we go. 
sending a 2022 RNC membership contribution of $35 or more in the enclosed pre-addressed reply envelope today. Okay, before we read any more, you're going to hear some numbers pop up a lot. You're going to hear a lot of talk about how much money I could have the privilege of sending to the Republican National Committee. And I sit here and still think to this day, if Donald Trump is a billionaire and he's made all of this money and he's so very rich, why does he keep needing me to give him money? Okay, here we go. Patriots like you were instrumental in growing our America First movement. Don't put me in here. I was not a part of this. And played, here we go, where is, where are we? Played a leading role in helping me restore America's greatness, which is now being destroyed by Biden. <laughs> Note he doesn't really give any examples here. Oh, uh, okay. This next sentence is bonkers. This is great. I love this one. You ready? Here we go. The Marxist Democrats, along with their pals in big tech and their allies in the fake news media, are doing everything in their power. This is all underlined, so you know it's serious. Are doing everything in their power to erase all the gains you helped my administration achieve and silence the voices of real Americans like you. Dude, I'm a real American. 81 million people who voted for Biden were real Americans. Stop trying to make this that your minority group is the real America and everybody else is just usurpers. Okay? I, I, I hate that. I hate that dialogue so much. And again, erase all the gains you helped my administration achieve. I would love for you to explain what those were. Please do. I can't, I can't name anything. I don't know what you're thinking it was. Negotiating with the Taliban? Uh, what? Abandoning the Kurds? What do you want as an accomplishment? Tear gassing people in Lafayette Park? Would you like that on your accomplishment list? Under Biden's failed leadership, America's reputation is gone, our borders are broken, Afghanistan's surrender and withdrawal was a disgrace, inflation is raging, our culture is being destroyed, and our history and heritage, both good and bad, are being extinguished by the far left, we are now a laughing stock all over the world. Oh yeah, when you were in charge, the world was not laughing at us. The idea that a reality star that used to sell steaks online was the president definitely didn't get anyone guffawing. What, what are you talking about? The, our history and heritage both good and bad. Dude, every time we talk about teaching history... Well, we don't want to teach critical race theory in schools. And then you say, okay, well, what do you want to do about it? Well, we, we don't want to teach this and this and this and this. And, okay, so you're revising history yourself. We wanted to expand the conversation. I think most Americans did. They wanted to explain that we've made mistakes. We've made some bad ones, and we wanted to make a point to explain that to people. Not some ultra-nationalistic version of history. We wanted to explain the good and bad. We weren't erasing it. We were explaining it. And then they go around and say that there's all these books that we can't have in schools. You know. And, and that, oh yeah, and that we can't say that Nazis were of low moral character. Unbelievable. America's reputation is gone. Our borders are broken. We had one of the biggest drug busts on the border in American history during the Biden administration. Afghanistan surrender. You negotiated that. It's bonkers, man. Right? It is bonkers. Okay, there's so much here. Okay, let's just keep moving on. Okay. We can't let this happen. The only way to stop Biden is to elect Trump Republican majorities in the U.S. House and U.S. Senate in November. I don't know if you can read this next part. Hopefully this will focus in. Please stand shoulder to shoulder with me and the RNC by making a gift of 35, 50, 100, 250, 500, 1,000, 2,900, or whatever you can afford to activate your 2022 RNC membership and help elect Republicans up and down the ballot who will work to protect your freedoms 
and your rights against the, okay, here's where we get into the good stuff, the radical socialist communists who are hell-bent on ruining our country. Because socialism and communism are the same thing. We put a slash. It's basically the same, folks. This is the thing. Eventually, these words lose all meaning. Marxism, socialism, communism, they're all the same thing, right? Why even look it up? Why even try to figure out if these are completely different systems? It doesn't matter. Page two. There's a page two! I can't believe he wrote this long bes between hamburgers. Okay, look, here, here, here we go. Good stuff here. Joe Biden is destroying America. His policies have created a living national nightmare. He's... Hey, oh my god, okay. He surrendered our energy independence, sabotaged the economy, surged violent crime, caved to China, crushed our citizens instead of the virus. What? <laughs> We're gonna make the case! We're gonna make the case that Trump was very, was very much trying to curb the viral infections. How dare Joe let the virus run rampant? Oh yeah, dude. You had nothing to do with that. Created the single greatest humiliation in our history in his disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan and left a wide open border to deadly drugs, which we confiscated, vicious crime, which is overblown, and unlimited illegal immigration at home across an invisible border that we made up. But also, no, not unlimited immigration, guys. We have one of the most secure borders in the world. I, I know that this is hard for a lot of people to understand. By putting down all of those Border Patrol agents and putting down the fencing and the borders, we increased illegal immigration into the country. We increased the influx of uh, undocumented workers into the country. Because we broke circular flow of people living in Mexico and working in the United States or vice versa. We, we cut off circular flow by doing all those measures. This wasn't a problem before. We made it a problem. Now Biden and his far-left puppet masters want the federal government to take over your elections, limit your First and Second Amendment rights, and raise your taxes to pay for their ever-expanding socialist welfare state. Well, I mean, if you're a multi-millionaire or a billionaire, they'd probably raise your taxes. I think that was the plan. Or have people that have back taxes pay those. That would probably be good. You know, I heard recently that if we actually just collected the taxes that are owed to us by, like, the ultra-wealthy, the taxes they should have paid that they were able to avoid paying through, like, shell companies and legal loopholes, etc., it would be, like, $5 trillion. Wouldn't that pay for our entire stimulus? Like, wouldn't that, wouldn't that pay for the entire infrastructure bill and build back better and everything like that? That, that would pay for it, right? And limit your First and Second Amendment rights. For the people on the right, you can't make that argument anymore. I'm, I'm so sorry. You just can't. The First Amendment, like, okay, you're the ones that want to ban books out of schools. You're the ones that want to stop people from being able to congregate in the street. You, you want to stop protests because, oh, I think that they might be terrorist organizations. Or there could be looting! So we're going to break down, we're going to crack down on all these protests with law and order. That whole narrative. You're trying to ban books out of schools. You're trying to stop topics from being discussed. You don't want people to even talk about sexuality at all. In any capacity. Or if they have husbands or wives. Because the kids are too young to understand such things. Don't give me that you're, they're violating your First Amendment rights. And Second Amendment... Okay. Can we stop for a second? Because I need to... I, I'm a little bit of a segue here. But uh, Republicans, I don't want to tell you this. But I think somebody needs to. The Second Amendment is not going away. I know that you think it is. I know you think the Democrats are going to take it away. But your ability to own a gun is not going away. 
okay? The most anyone will ever do is try to figure out if we can keep violent criminals or people with a history of domestic violence from getting a firearm. That's pretty much what they're going to try to do, if anything. Chances are, it will never affect you. Even if, I just want you to, I just want you to do some math with me. Let's say the Democrats all of a sudden have a majority of people that are willing to just outright ban guns. Let's just say that, that they want to ban and confiscate all weapons. They won't because even some of the Democrats are pro-gun Democrats. So I don't know how that would work. But let's just say they, they finally did. They, they cracked the code and they were able to ban guns in the United States. All right, I want you to do the math with me. There's what? 130 million Americans that own guns. How many search and seizures do we do a year? About 20,000? About 20,000 search and seizures. Okay, let's just say for a second that they say, okay, we're going to do another 20,000 just to collect guns. And let's say in this really idealistic liberal society that like 90% of people did the responsible thing and turned in their guns. Okay. So that's going to leave you with what? 13 million Americans that you have to seize guns from. And you're doing it at 20,000 a year. For the record, basically we're looking at like 700 years. Like, like the country will no longer exist by the time they collect all the guns. Okay, stop, stop giving me this argument that that's what you care about. And also, while we're at it, if the Republicans are so interested in, like, banning all of this stuff, banning books, banning CRT, banning this, banning that, banning the other thing, then what rights are you trying to save with the Second Amendment? It sounds like they're just using the Second Amendment to say that you can fight back against tyranny, but the second that they start doing tyrannical things, you're like, well, we can't live in a tyranny because I have my gun. I feel like that's just a mind prison for you at this point. It's why you see a lot of autocracies and tyrannies that don't limit uh, the right to own a gun. They don't take away guns because they know that it will keep a majority population that will always be in favor of whatever the government is, even if that government is taking away their rights because they let them have the gun. Anywho, sorry. Back on to this amazing letter. Poll after poll show voters don't support the direction Biden is taking our nation. And my polls are an all-time high, perhaps because of the horrible job he is doing. Americans are realizing that we can't, cannot afford the far left's tack and, and spend freedom-destroying wish list that we must have a check and balance to the Democrats' unfettered power. His polls are at an all-time high. Where? They, you went to CPAC, dude. Literally your home base. And you couldn't even get half of the people there to say that they want you to run for president. How are your polls at an all-time high? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie and tell you that Biden's poll numbers are good. But if you were to put a poll in front of people today of if the election was held today, would you vote for Biden and Trump? I'm still pretty sure Biden would win. Because even though people don't like him, they like you less. Americans are realizing we can't afford the tax and spend freedom-destroying wish list. What does that mean? The freedom-destroying wish list? Your party just decided that they want to roll back Roe v. Wade. What are you just talking about freedom-destroying? What, we want to talk about racism happening in schools? We'd like gay people to not feel persecuted? We'd like trans people to feel like they're People? Like, what, what freedom-destroying wish list are you talking about? Tax and spend? We get taxed and spend more money during Republican administrations than we ever do during Democratic ones. You want to know why? Because you will give giant military contracts for more bombs and tanks and planes than we will ever use. Hundreds of billions of dollars. You will spend it like it is going out of style. The second we say we want a health care plan, oh, there's no money in the budget for that. But there is so much money in the budget for a Tomahawk missile array. Give me a break. But aided by the fake news media, the Biden Democrats have free reign to mislead voters in the nightly news daily newspapers, and social media with their anti-Republican message. I don't know if this is, like, 
before or during. No, this would have to be during the time that he had that truth network that's going just so well. The anti-Republican message, well, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, if they're refuting, like, the Marjorie Taylor Greens talking about Jewish space lasers, I think that they have a general response to the public to say, that seems crazy. Um, but then if you look at social media, I know people are so excited that maybe if Elon's running Twitter, yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure that he's going to be very committed to whatever they want to say on the platform. But the point is, in Facebook, do you know how many like Republican-held messaging is going on? Do you, do you know how much traction Fox News get? Like I have like recommendations that I have never watched a Fox News segment by by voluntary. <laughs> By voluntary uh, means, but I go on YouTube and sometimes I will see a Fox News segment uh, that's uh, that that's not like somebody commenting on a Fox News segment, but it's just a Fox News segment. I don't know where that comes from. I I don't know why that gets recommended to me. I'll be looking at things that are specifically people that are critiquing the right wing, and there'll be advertisements for very much like prepper culture stuff on there. There'll be like sidebars where there will be right-wing pundits suggested to me. I, I don't really know what they're talking about there. Anyway, this is going on too long. Let's get to the bottom of this truly bonkers letter. Um, the RNC is leading the way to stop Democrats' left-wing agenda by electing Republican candidates up and down the ballot, committing to limited government, lower taxes, individual freedom, and free enterprise, the main principles of our America First movement. Oh, they finally explained what it's supposed to be. Okay, limited government, lower taxes, individual freedom, and free enterprise. Okay, so trans people can be people. We're not going to spend money on the military because it's like 51% of our budget. Good. We're going to get lower taxes, so folks. They're going to tax the ultra wealthy and we're going to stop spending so much on the military industrial complex. Congratulations. Good. I like this. I like this. Maybe they'll get me back. Uh, limited government. Oh, good. So the government's going to stay out of women's uteruses. Oh, terrific. Great. Uh, individual freedom. Oh, okay. So, you know, I can, I can uh, not have to worry about being in a Christo-fascist state or whatever we're in now? That's terrific. Free enterprise? Oh, wow. You know what would really help with free enterprise is if we uh, didn't constantly give preferential treatment to giant corporations and uh, maybe start giving more attention to small mom and pop and brick and mortar stores, you know, small businesses in America. That would help with free enterprise, wouldn't it? Instead of doing giant bailouts for banks and car companies, etc. Yeah, that would be, that'd be good. Okay. Well, hey, you know what? If that's actually what they're going to do, but you know they're not going to. And now, here we go. It's, it, make it a comeback, folks. Here we go. Getting to the bottom. So please activate your 2022 RNC membership today by sending a contribution of 35, 50, 100, 200, 50, 500, 1,000, or 2,900 or more to help elect Trump Republican majorities in the U.S. House and U.S. Senate that will help fight back against the big government socialist schemes of the left. <laughs> okay. Your immediate response will ensure that all our party's candidates will have the resources to win in 2022 and offer Americans the real leadership they deserve and demand. I look forward to hearing back from you and working with you and the RNC to elect Republicans up and down the ballot in November. Please give as generously as you can. That 2,900 seems like an awfully specific number. I have to assume that if you are to give at 3,000, there's like a tax liability or something. So that's why they're trying to get underneath that. Maybe it doesn't have to be reported, but it's such a specific amount, like right under 3,000. Oh, and by the way, in case you didn't get that point driven home, here at the bottom in the PS, it makes it clear that, that yes, please do put the 2,900 <laughs> and put it in a self-addressed Democrat. Everything you help me accomplish by putting America first is in danger of being erased by the Biden Democrats as they push America to the far left with a radical socialist agenda. Dude, you have never seen radical socialism. 
America doesn't have radical socialism. You want to see radical socialism? There are countries that you could point to, but the radical socialists, as you call them, are probably like what? Bernie Sanders? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? Is that what we're going with? Those are basically New Deal Democrats. Like, the, like, like socialism, socialism, like, and, and the thing about it is that even news networks, news networks aren't radical social, they're not radical leftist organizations. Even when you look at like CNBC or, or CNN, MSNBC or any of those, uh, you want to know why? Because none of them are going to talk about socialism. They are going to believe in the idea of capitalism. Even the left in this country is still pretty much like, yeah, capitalism. Maybe not as much, but <laughs> still capitalism. I don't know how they square the idea of limited government with trying to build a giant border wall or trying to enforce a bunch of laws for women and, you know, the gay community, etc. I, I don't know how they square that. It doesn't seem like limited government to me. It seems like more government interference. I don't think this message to anyone who has a functioning brain is going to really appeal, which is probably why it's going to work. Because we live in America, and the the new thing here, as we have seen with the, the whole thing about CRT and the culture war starting back up, is that uh, we believe in an anti-education, anti-intellectual society. We don't believe in science. Uh, we call vaccines into question, all vaccines now, apparently. Uh, we don't want to wear masks because masks impede your breathing, apparently. Uh, we, we don't want people to learn things because that's indoctrination. Learning things is indoctrination. Uh, th this, is, this is who we are now. And I got to be honest with you, it, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Like, as, as fun as this is to read, it speaks to how frustrating it is for me to watch as I, I see a civilization that seems hell-bent, regardless of what anyone does, on destroying itself. This is not the way. I think we need better education. I think we need a wider range of education. You know, people keep talking about how, like, socialism and communism are destroying our nation. It's like, dude, you don't have a clue. What socialism? What kind? This is this is so far from that kind of a society. And maybe what would really help is if we could, like, I don't know, maybe in schools, teach people what all of these systems are: socialism and communism, and capitalism, and tyranny, and autocracies, and authoritarianism, and libertarianism, and and anarchism. All of them. Just t teach teach them what all of these things are, and then we don't have people just throwing buzzwords into this form letter that's apparently signed by, I guess that's Donald Trump's signature. I've seen it before. It just mostly looks like he's having a cardiac arrest, but, you know. Uh, that's an EKG right there. It's so annoying because I sit here and say, America is like the most powerful nation that has ever existed on the face of the planet. We're the most affluent nation. We have the largest military that has ever been assembled on the face of planet Earth, and yet somehow we seem to have this call of the void to just steamroll everything <laughs> and destroy ourselves. We will give nothing to individuals, and the second they ask for something, we'll say that they're doing tax and spend socialism. Yeah, don't give anything to people except a middle finger. I guess that's the new Republican idea. Also, just another little caveat is, uh, I used to think the idea of limited government was pretty great. Right, limited government. Um... Until you start to ask yourself, well, what does that actually mean? Well, you make the government a lot smaller, which also means that it can be a lot more focused. But also, it means that if you have a limited government, somebody's got to take the power from, from that government. Like, if the government's not going to have power, which obviously Trump would want to keep power, otherwise he wouldn't want to be the president or have his people in place... If the government's so ineffective and weak, no one wants to rule it or run it. But anyway, um, 
if the government doesn't have the power, somebody's going to still have it. And there's a lot of people, especially on the right, that have this notion, oh, well, if the government if the government doesn't have the power, then the people shall have the power. But that's never what happens, right? It's going to get legislated out, and it's going to go off to private industries. And then the private industries will make up the rules that go. So then you have no vote. You have no say. You can say, well, I'm going to deregulate the coal industry. And then the coal industry will go, cool, I'm throwing coal shale into your water streams. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can take big... Uh, organizations, and you can say, oh, well, we don't want to regulate them. They should be allowed to do whatever they want. And then they'll say, oh, cool. So we don't have to worry about workers' rights. We don't have to worry about unions. We don't have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, OSHA requirements or safety protocols or anything like that. Oh, cool. Great. I'm so glad we have the limited government. I don't know. Sometimes I think that the best thing is if you have a big, lethargic, complex government. Because they never get around to actually doing anything substantial. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, so they never really accomplish anything. But at least they can't have power seized from them for somebody else that you have less say in. At least in the government you have some say. But So this has been another installment of Stuff I Got in the Mail. And uh, thank you to a former president. They didn't put former, they just put president because some people still think he is. But former President Donald Trump, thank you for that on Wednesday morning for sending this out specifically to me. I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you'll send me more of these letters. I would absolutely love to be able to share them with everyone out there. Okay, your prophecy for the day. It goes to 2,900. <laughs>